All right, guys, what's up? Welcome to the show. Super excited. Today, I got some really fun stuff we're going to go over. We're going to talk about hair trends over really the last few years, and I have never done it. Today's the day. So we're going to talk about that. One thing that I want to talk about today and what, what I want to go over is the reason I haven't done a 50 plus class or video is because 50 plus women wear the same trends that all women wear. So like I've never really, whenever I have a woman in my chair, I'm not thinking, oh, she's 50 plus, so I'm going to give her this style uh, or this cut. Let's say this cut. Now, a style might be a little bit different or a length that fits somebody's personality or, or who they are might be a little bit different. But that doesn't mean that because you're 50 plus, you're going to want one of these styles. So let's just kind of start there. All right. And uh, let's see. That's the first one. I like this one. I like the, the feather back effect. Um, the way that I would cut this is I would over direct a lot of it forward or I would follow the head shape to create those layers. You can see up towards the back where I really look at it. It's a feathered fringe and then the back of it's kind of feathered as well. So that's really, to me, it's saying that that they're following the round of the head as they cut that haircut. So I like that style. Pretty cool. If you're looking for something like that. Got that one. Love this. Love the curl. This is, again, following the round, kind of. You would obviously cut it differently. For me, I would pick individual curls and cut them. And I would take some pieces a little bit further than others. But I would go with the overall shape of that. But it's still got that same kind of fringe. So when you look at it's kind of the same idea. This one here. Really all three of them. They all kind of have the same. They have a fringe and a round layered effect. For me, I would cut them differently uh, shape-wise, but obviously the technique would be different. When cutting, I would cut this one dry for sure. Like I said, individual pieces, but then just keep that silhouette. Think about cutting with the round of the head to create that overall look. All kind of bob shape, but with volume, long bob-ish. Next, we've got this one I love. I love the undone effect of it. I love kind of the round feel. Me personally, I'd probably take the sides right around the parietal ridge area. I would take that a little bit tighter just for my personal preference. But but, um, but overall, I love kind of that really um, textured outer perimeter, but still kind of put together and feathered on the top. So I think it fits somebody that is a little bit older, maybe wants a little bit more of that put together feel, but then says something like has a little bit of texture, has a little bit of personality around the outside. I like that. Uh, also easy to style. This is cool because I feel myself kind of in this same category here. My hair is a little bit skinnier, we'll call it. And I think that this is a little bit skinnier skinnier as well. So when you look at what short hair can do for somebody that has thinner hair with the right style, the right product, blow drying. So here's a little tip for people that have a little bit skinnier hair. They, you can blow it dry fully and then start adding products that uh, aren't wet that have more of a matte finish to them. And that will give you a thicker appearance on your hair and it'll give you that textured effect. So that's kind of, for me, I never, my hair is a crazy, but it looks thick because I blow it dry always. I never style it wet. And then I put my product in afterwards, makes it feel and look nice and thick. So kind of a same thought process here, giving what appears to be a little bit thinner hair, a thicker appearance. A couple more. This one I love, classic style, feathered over the ear. So this is definitely good for somebody that uh, wants to cover their ears a little bit and just have that little bit longer effect. But yeah, I really love this one. Again, would cut it with the round of the head on the bottom. And then the top, I'd probably over direct a little bit backwards so it would push some of that weight forward and then feather the fringe, which we're going to kind of do some of that today. All right, a couple more and we're done. I love this one. Blunt bob. I, I love everything about it. So if anytime a client wants to pull something like this off, I, I think it's awesome. But what works about this is look at the jawline and how it connects so well with this haircut. I think that's what really makes it stand out for me. One more and then the one we're going to do. So I like this one because it's a tucked effect. Um, if it wasn't tucked, I'm sure it has just some nice layers laying on the sides but probably feathers back. I bet you it replicates this first style. Probably looks, if she had thick hair like this, but because she doesn't have thick hair, she tucks it or for the look for the night. All right, and to the one that we're gonna cut today. The reason I chose to cut this one is because I think it's the most salon friendly. It's a pixie cut, but it's long. So I think this is gonna be fun for us to go over. I love the volume in the front. I think that's super cool. I think all of this is Green's salon reality. So I wanna go through and showcase this cut today. All right, so we're going to start by sectioning off the hair, a triangle on top of the head right here, around over to the edge of the eyebrow. And I'll take this whole section up and I'm going to twist it away, that, creating that triangle on top. The reason I want to create this triangle is because I want to always see that heavy side. I want to separate the heaviness from what's going to be the weak side over here. We'll comb the rest down the back anyways. So this hair 
has to do with the front of the haircut. This hair has to do with the back. So I wanna separate those different. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another triangle. It's gonna come around the head shape here to a point right above the occipital bone in the back. Another point is gonna come right off of the edge of our parting here. See where I'm at and I will show you guys this section. So I'll clean it up. So I started, my initial thing is just to start the parting, try to get it where I want it. And then I'm gonna go in and clean the, these sections up to get them exactly how I want them. And now the reason I'm working diagonal back lines is because we're gonna be cutting with the round of the head. So that will continue my flow. So diagonal back is gonna be more of a rounded shape because it's following the head shape. And diagonal forward is more towards the face triangular. So I'll show you the other angle so you guys can get a really good look at this. Looks like a weird shape up there, almost a figure eight. So you can see that triangle that we're creating in the back. So that goes to the occipital bone right above. It's a diagonal back line and my finger angles are gonna mimic that and follow. All right, let's get started. Let's cut some hair. So what we're gonna do first, the most important side for me because the heavy side's just gonna kind of flop over. So as long as we get our weak side where we want it, then uh, we're gonna be pretty good to go on the rest of the cut. Comb all the hair backwards, get it moving that diagonal back. I'm gonna take my first diagonal back parting to the ear like that. I'm gonna slide my clip up underneath, clip the rest away. Now I've got my first section. I'm gonna work with the loose teeth of the comb. The reason I'm gonna work with that is because I don't want a ton of tension in this. Uh, it depends on the hair texture. With thicker hair textures, I like to work wide teeth through. And then um, as I work with the wide teeth, I go, uh, I get a little bit less tension, gives me a little bit of a forgiving line, which to me falls a little bit nicer on thick hair. Thick hair, I never want a bulky blunt line within the cut. So I'll even be doing a little bit of point cutting straight out from the head. Now I don't want to tilt my fingers in at all. If I tilt my fingers this way, I'm going to automatically start building weight. What we should know as hair cutters is that this head is already going to start to turn in, right? So it's automatically going to build that weight line for us. So I'm just going to work straight up. Oh, just like this, grab the hair, loose teeth, bring it in my hand, straight out from the head, fingers parallel to the parting, parallel to the head, and then point cut, go. So I'm point cutting through like that. And that's our first little cut. Wide the hair again, get it moving in the direction I'm gonna take my parting. And I just work, comb the hair back, slide my clip up underneath. Just like this, bring it into my hand, straight out from where it lives, right? Not down to where it was, up to where it lives. So I comb the hair back and I take my diagonal back parting working to the hairline back here and then I'm stopping. Um, that for me, I've talked about this a lot recently, but this hairline up, I always treat as a totally different haircut. So I'm just going to continue my line to that point and then I pause and I cut. If it helps you guys, you could totally separate it, which maybe I'll do just to give you separate that hairline area. So you can see where the hairline starts to grow up right here. So I'll go in here and separate with a line first, just like that. Comb that over and clip it away so that I don't even cut in to any of that so, diagonal back point cutting my lines cut at the same time all right again diagonal back so another tip don't take too thick of sections because if you do you'll start over directing too much down and creating too much of a weight line right away all right cool so now this is all coming out to me but notice the head shape is starting to move away so because it starts to move away it'll automatically start building that weight line that we see in the cut so bring it up so if i start dropping too much like this then i start building too much weight all of a sudden she'll have hair growing out this way as opposed to starting to round with the head. So just be well aware of your elevation as you're working through here. It's why we like to work slight um, diagonal instead of just straight horizontal because straight horizontal becomes a little bit harder to be aware of your elevation. So last couple sections. Some of you guys might want to try to grab all this at once. Refrain, try not to, because if you take too much, that's going to that's gonna automatically lower that. So just push yourself to not take too much hair extra lift because we're now we're really starting to round off so a little extra lift keep it nice and light now take a look at how it looks so far so you can see how it's not too heavy right here that's the plan so that elevation helps round that off if you don't elevate it then it's going to start growing out like this and then you you end up with a shape that you didn't want so think about head shape how that head is curving as you're cutting and then work from there now i'm going to do honestly the same thing on the opposite side then i'm going to work the back so to separate 
straight front and back. I just take a line and then I see where I'm at and then I'll go a little bit further over and I'll just continue until I get perfectly uh, in line in the back. As you can see, when I say I'm separating the front and the back, I'm separating where the hairline goes straight up the head. All of this hair is the same thickness. All right, so now let out the clip. How do you know what length to cut this? You can actually take a piece and measure it on your comb. Like this goes to this third dot right here on my comb. So I could come over here, take a piece. We got third dot right there. So now I take it and I cut this little piece at the third dot. Now I've got a guide for the rest of this side. As long as my elevation stays the same and I'm working through it, I'll be able to see right where that guide is. So right here, comb it out. And I'm going to go through and point cut my section. I want to work through this side pretty quick. We'll go salon reality speed here. Diagonal back, comb the rest, flip it away. Make sure you can see that guide through it. See my guide through it, point cut, second knuckle, cool. Here, my fingers are parallel with the head shape, so I'm no longer, so I go here, parallel, and then as I come back, now I'm still parallel. We gotta be aware of the head shape horizontally through, and then also vertically. So now my elevation is even higher, and my finger angle follows around the head. How the two sides are different. They're different because they are different. Like we wouldn't cut this side the same as this side because this is still got to fall over it. So now look at and then the same thing. I'm still continuing to shift my finger angle, but it still lays nice and flat. No graduation, right? That's the goal. We're going to continue through the back. I want to be able to see a clean guide as I start to cut because I'm going to use that as a guide. So when I look at this from the side, if we went to cross check it right through here, this should all match up in a line, right? So through there. So now I'm going to use that line for the rest of this cut. Another important reason or another good reason to have consistent elevation throughout the cut. Now I'm going to work these sections into my hand just like this and start to cut my line connecting front and back. So working my way all the way through this, following the round of the head, keep your finger parallel. And then we've got our line there. So we take our clip right here, straight out from the head, point cutting, letting the head shape start to build that graduation towards the interior of my finger, towards it up here, right? Because the head shape curves around. So as the head shape's curving, I'm cutting here. It's lower elevation here. It's straight out from the head here. When there's lower elevation up here, it starts to build weight. So we're building weight in the crown area. We want that. That's good. And then as I work around, I'm collapsing with 90 degree uh, cutting through the bottom. All right. Diagonal back. It's shifting towards the top because of the head shape. So I'm watching that, making sure it doesn't get too extreme. But I definitely want that buildup of weight to help with the um, crown of the head. I want a little extra weight in the crown. Here, I need it to be parallel 90 degrees out from the head, and I want it to be straight out from the head so we're not building any weight in the back. Looking good, looking nice. There's this line starts to crisscross with the opposite side. That's good. You want that to happen because that's gonna become my guideline for the other side as well. So we'll connect those two points together. So I want that crisscross. I want diagonal back through, which turns into diagonal forward. And then diagonal back is gonna crisscross, cross check, and it'll complete the back of the haircut. Right here will be the last section I cut on this side. Now we're gonna work back. Right, it looks really, really nice. So we're gonna saturate everything. It's a little trick. Your comb, comb helps focus it. Comb's blurry, you're not in focus. Little content creation, fun fact. All right, so I follow this line right here. There's my guide. Now I'm gonna continue through the back. We're gonna go salon speed here. Not gonna talk too much. Over, comb this back. It's not much hair to go. It's less turning of my body to cut. And we're connecting these two points. This is all that previously cut section that I did. Last piece, literally piece of this cut, bring it back. All right, so now just to do a quick cross check, you could do scissor over comb work if you wanted to. You could just literally like, I'm gonna take a little bit of diagonal forward, move some of the hair just to check the corners, uh, edges. So we'll go here, take a section, I'll pull some of that hair out and just look at the line. And you just wanna make sure that you have a nice consistent line throughout the cut. All right, so now we're gonna work the last two sections of the cut. That One of them is gonna be this top section in the front and the other one's going to be the back section. We're gonna work the back section. Let's go tilt her head forward. I'm cutting short to long so I can cut from my guide up. So I bring this hair out. I can see that guideline right there. And what I mean by dropping the weight off early the way that I think about haircutting is kind of like if you've ever used a squeegee on your windshield and you push 
the water to one part, no matter what, you're pushing it to a place. So with weight, I feel like when I cut something, I've now pushed weight to a different place. When I over direct it and cut it, pushing the weight to a different place. So as I'm cutting this vertically, I'm cutting it. And if I just keep my finger angle here, I'm cutting it and then dropping the weight off. If I cut it and I work my way up this section even further, and now all of a sudden I'm cutting it here, I'm dropping the weight off here, here instead of here. That's the difference. And it's a big difference when you think about the side profile of your guest. Now we're going to continue through this side. Vertical section, following the head shape. We're on a pivot here. So vertical on that pivot, bring the new hair towards me. See my guide. I'm going to point cut a little bit. Recomb, point cut, keep working vertical. Starts at 90. So we're like 90 here. We go. One last section. And this is where that disconnection starts to happen too. Um, it'll happen even more on the top, but uh, we were talking about that at the beginning, how that disconnect is going to play kind of a role in this haircut, you can see there is a tiny bit of disconnect, even though this will be combed backwards. So that is almost the end of the cut. So we got the top left and then we're done. So, and we'll blow dry. I'll so with this, I'm gonna cut diagonal back, moving with the head shape and try not to over direct too much until I get to that front part. And then I'm gonna over direct it a little extra to get a little extra length. The other thing is when you look at the style right here on the top, you can see a little extra weight there. I wanna build that weight up as well. So that could be a little layer popping, but I think a little extra weight right here in the center is actually a good thing. So that's, we're gonna work with that as well. So diagonal back. This will really connect to what we just cut that we started in the back. Diagonal back parting, comb the rest of it forward, bring that hair up into my hands and I'm gonna continue that line up into the air. So we're gonna continue those same diagonal partings across the top, bringing it up, traveling the guideline. So bringing that over to me, point cutting it. Now this angle gets longer at this, this side. So what I'll do is I'll slightly comb it into my hand and instead of taking that whole corner off, I'm just gonna kind of destroy it with a little point cutting. So it has some length, a couple pieces that are longer. It will give it a little extra bulk, but I'm not taking it all away. Um, I don't want it to be too heavy of a corner is really the, the reality of that. So diagonal back again, bring it up into the previous section, pulling that guide from what we cut on the underneath in the last section, and then directing this up, cutting a couple left, see my guide. Are you connecting the front triangle with the second triangle? Yes. Second triangle we just cut through here, through the front. This triangle I'm connecting to that. Not to this short underneath, but to the triangle, the disconnect, it was connecting to that. Now this is totally going to be disconnected because the triangle didn't reach all the way over here. So now I've got to use my guide from the interior, what I'm seeing from what I cut in this section and as it traveled. But to get my initial guide, it came from the previous triangle. And then the last section. So remember, moving this hair and just bringing it straight up. I might not need that length in this style, but I will use it to then see if it's where I want it to be, or I can always cut it shorter. You can't grow it longer in an instant. So you don't want to take anything too short, too long, and then I can cut into it in the dry cut. So here's where we're at in the style so far. Product choice today is going to be the Joyful Joyco Volumizing Styler. Um, so I'm going to put a little bit of that in the hair, create that volume. It's always good to have a base product. So even when I talked about thick hair earlier, it's good to have something for a base, something that's going to have a little bit of hold, then blow it dry, but you want to fully blow it dry. All right. So like I was saying, this is a super powerful blow dryer. So what we're going to do is I'm going to blow dry this. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. It literally, I don't even know what to say right now. I don't even know how to think. I might even add a couple shorter pieces right here on the front. And I like that hers kind of comes down a little bit more textured. Yeah, I'm gonna cut a little shorter pieces in the front. So this is what's good about leaving that little bit of extra length. These are a little too long for this style. So what I wanna do is just go in. If she wanted to wear it a little more slick back, that would be cool. Um, but for this particular style, in half close of the scissor right here. Now I'm bringing it over to the opposite side of the head. That's gonna give me a nice soft kind of feathered piece. And then I'm just gonna keep bringing some of these pieces over to me and cutting them in the same place. So half open, half close, little tease cut, bring another piece over. And we can even blend in this side a little bit on the finished style. Actually, let me show you the whole 360. That'll give you a better idea. So you can see the length that goes through, how it goes nice and smooth into the back. Obviously, I would personalize the edge. All right, you guys are the best. What do we say at the end of the day? It's going to be a great day. I'll see you guys next time.